Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of End Balance. I'm Emma Nedov, athlete, entrepreneur, and health coach. And here with me today is one of my really good friends, Luke Wadsworth, who is peak co-founder and owner. Yep, yep. He is also a former elite artistic gymnast, which is how we know each other. He's represented Australia at three world championships and two Commonwealth Games. So I am really excited to have you to talk to you today. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. You got it right, which is good. So I know. <laughs> Fumbled a little bit here. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> okay, so to get started, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into gymnastics in the first place? Yeah, so I think like most people when they're younger, sort of like as little kids, gymnasts, they have a lot of energy, see someone flipping around. Um, so I was just at the well, a local gym and my mum took me in, saw some people doing flips and I was like, that'd be really awesome to learn. <laughs> and then just sort of started from there. So we did like a little trial, um, really liked it and then sort of started progressing through the ranks. And then we had a just a like a little recreation sort of center and then built up into something that was a bit more competitive and then sort of went through there all the way up into the high performance center, which you had to sort of trial out for and yeah, sort of kicks out of my career from that point of view. Yeah, wow. So how old were you when you trialed out for the high performance? Uh, so I started the recreation one at five mm -hmm. and then at the high performance center, I was 10 and you had to like, the new center just opened up. So it was yeah. like pretty exciting to do this like big test there. Um, and I had no idea what it's gonna be like. We had this new coach from America at the time. Um, and it was just like a physical sort of test to see if you were like what they wanted, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so 10 years old is pretty, pretty intimidating, but yeah, I was lucky enough to get through, which is great. Yeah, I mean, I kind of started out the same. I, I went into it just for fun. Cause yeah. I was like, oh mom, that looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. Although apparently I cried my whole way to the gym yeah, when I was, I was like five. I was such a shy like kid. So I was like <laughs> always the one sitting in line, like waiting to be last. So I was like, oh no. Yeah. So whereas most people think gym is really like energetic. Yeah. So I was so quiet. I was like, like so did everything right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I like just bawled my eyes out and I remember, well, I don't remember, but so I've been told I walked into the gym, my mouth just dropped and I was like, wow. And yeah. I was like, I didn't look back from yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah, I think sim similar to me, like a sport like gymnastics, you don't go into it thinking, I'm going to be an elite athlete. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. some do with that little dream, yeah, Olympic dream, yeah, dream but that yeah. was not me. Nah, I think <laughs> I just wanted to learn to flip. I thought, and that was like my only goal. Like if I can flip, I'm like the coolest kid ever. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just sort of got that and I was like, oh, well, there's other things to learn and just sort of started progressing and started competing and then... I started getting competitive apparently. So yeah, mm. I started getting a big competitive edge. So like when you made it into the high performance center, which was like Melbourne based. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what happened from there? When did you start? When was your first international competition? Yeah. So I sort of started there and we, I was doing like, it's hard to explain. I was doing like the level system before I started. So which is kind of more just Australia based. And then as soon as you went to the high performance center, it's international. So mm. you start like the underage groups. And so that first year was like such a big jump for me. And I was like coming last in every comp. And I was just like, I thought I was good. And now I'm coming last everywhere. Like I think my first nationals, I finished second last. Great start. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, obviously started making big improvements and I was quite small. So that kind of helped um, with the basics in the gymnastics. So then made my first comp at, I think, 15 in OB Cup. Um, so first time overseas, first time like competing for Australia. And yeah, I'd never been on like a plane, even with my family overseas. Yeah. Um, and flew over there into their winter and was yeah, just amazed at how good some of the other guys were over there as well. <laughs> I know it's, isn't it eye opening when you go to your first international competition? And that's the thing, like we're so young. Yeah. I think yeah. I was 13. Yeah. And yeah. you don't travel with your parents. You're nah. traveling with your coach and your like manager. Yeah. And you get out there and it's like, oh my goodness, these people are not from Australia and they speak another language. Yeah. They're way better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think like that was so in, like intimidating as you said, like flying with, being, I mean, I was a bit older, but 14, nearly 15 just traveling with your coach and like your mm. teammates. And then you get out to the comp and you're just like trying to watch everyone like in awe. And these guys are so used to it. They're like jumping up for their routine. And it's, I'm sitting there like, can I have a turn to warm up? And they're just like going and going. I'm like this little tiny kid like, oh no, it's not me yet. Because the warm up's so different as well. It's just like free for all for the podium training. So I it was a definitely you, an experience. I hated that about yeah. it because yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. When you first start out, you're, it's such an intimidating situation. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but even by the time I made it to world championships, like 18, 19, yeah. it, same thing scared yeah. you'd yeah. stand up there and be like is it my turn on the beam yet like yeah. i don't i don't know yeah. and my coach like classic would be there like yeah. get on yeah. the beam go, go like yeah, go. yeah. and you're standing like i don't know if yeah. i can <laughs> i'm in my first like senior comp uh i'm an all-rounder so we went to a comp which is just specialists so i'm kind of was 
okay at everything but not really great at anything mm -hmm. and it was a world cup event and uh the current world champion on high bar was up and i was in the same rotation and i'm not very good at high bar <laughs> so he has his turn i'm standing there like uh, I don't. I don't really want to go now. Like I'm so bad at high bar. He's just. Everyone's just like watched his whole routine in the gym, and I'm standing there like, I'm just gonna swing some giants. Here we go. And everyone's like still watching. I'm like, oh, just don't even watch. So oh, that was pretty funny. Oh yeah. my gosh, I can't. I just. I relate to that so much. I'll never forget being after. Um, I think Catalina Pono was like yeah. the number one on beam at that time, and yeah. she was someone I was just in awe of. And she was up warming up in front of me, and uh, you know how in like um proper podium like warm up you do routines kind yeah, of thing yeah like full yeah and yeah so she's done the same thing gone up there she's super sharp yeah and just beautiful to watch and I was next and I was like oh well at least here, here we go yeah I was like, at least if I like fall or do something stupid yeah, then it, it's like a, oh, it's all right yeah, it's like yeah. oh well whatever you're like yeah. not that good anyway so I think that like until you sort of get a few comps under your belt I think that's because we're obviously Australia so far mm -hmm. um until you get a few comps under your belt that first international experience is always like oh, this is different, like, and you see the, the people you see on YouTube or TV and just trying mm. to, like, compete after them all in the same group. But they're also not, that's what's weird, like, you think, like, you're like, oh, I, I don't want to push him, but they're also nice, like, yeah. we're with the Japanese guys who are, like, the best in the world, and they're like, have a turn, I'm like, just, no one watch, like, yeah, I'll go, but I'm just going to do some swings, and your coach is just like, go, and you're like, I don't want to do it yet, so, yeah. I, <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's one of the things where at least if you've got a coach that's had that experience, they yeah. know how to handle it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I can't imagine doing that without my coach at least knowing what to do because I certainly didn't. No, nah, no. Nah. I think too, like, uh, I was pretty lucky in my first sort of few international comps. I was the youngest on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other guys were like, look, it's going to be pretty crazy, but, like, we go through as a team, we help each other out. But I think, yeah, if you're a, if you're a fresh team or someone with that, that experience, you're all going to kind of sit there and all being like, uh, I guess it's my turn. Of course, so, yeah. <laughs> I remember, Helps a lot. I remember being told, actually, um, funnily enough, this is how Wadzi and I know each other. At 2014 World Championships, yeah. Nanning, Nanning, China. Yeah. 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 Um, that was my first World Championship. Okay. Yeah. Was that, at what Worlds was that? It was my second or third. I can't remember. Okay. I, I, so I, I you, gotta look back the date. So you were a seasoned yeah, yeah. World Champion exactly. yeah. competitor. Okay. Well, it's like nothing else, this competition. You go in there, it's like a, what, three week campaign? Yeah. And um, we were told, in particular myself and another girl who were the babies on the yeah, team, yeah. Um, yeah, you're not allowed to watch anyone. Yeah. You're not allowed to look any yeah. at anyone. Stay in the zone. Yeah. yeah, just don't even bother looking. And I remember like looking over my coach and like, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> just like look down the whole time. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. And mind you, 2014, I was 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think too, like you, you sort of get used to what you like need as an athlete as well. Like mm. very hard when you're younger, but. I used to do, like, same thing, like, don't watch anyone. But then I'd get really, like, into myself and I'd just be sitting there just, like, really focused and then be like, all right, let's go. Like, I, need, I needed to be a bit more relaxed and, like, talk to my teammates, not necessarily watch other people because then it can be a bit intimidating, but at least have that same environment as training. Uh, your training was maybe a little different to mine. But in, <laughs> in Melbourne, we were very, like, the boys were really, like, all get around each other, very loud atmosphere, whereas some gymnastics comps are very quiet. So I found that, like felt like much more pressure mm. so my first comment was like don't watch anyone just be here and then I'd be like oh I better be perfect otherwise someone's gonna like laugh at me or something and I'm like everyone's doing the same stuff right like no one's gonna laugh at you if you fall so yeah, yeah no you're absolutely right and I think that's something worth noting is like how different actually our training was because yeah. I remember even when we actually met it was a bit like like oh, naughty because I <laughs> yeah, wasn't not allowed, allowed, not allowed yeah. <laughs> the girls were not allowed to talk to the yeah. boys no way I think that's like people really <laughs> probably don't understand like it wasn't like that for every country but we were very mm. separate like training camps was like different facilities that when we went overseas like different levels of the hotel or whatever yeah um so that segregation was kind of weird so I think like the first time we met as it was under a circumstance was like uh Hi, like <laughs> we competed against each other for th like for three weeks, but I've never spoken to you. And it's just like this awkward like encounter. Like, hey. Yeah. And it was hilarious because we were in China and we just finished yeah, competition just finished and we're, yeah. we're what, walking down the street yeah. in Nanning to yeah. go to a nightclub. Yeah. And then because we had this thing that the girls don't talk to us. So we thought like, I guess they didn't talk to anyone. So <laughs> just having a normal conversation, I was just like blown away. I, I don't know why, but I was just like, oh, you're like a normal person, which like, of course, but Those I was just like, 
Those what, were what? the exact words out of your mouth. Oh, you're actually quite normal. Yeah, and it was, it was pretty funny. So. <laughs> that was so and good. That, that, that's how the friendship started before that then. That is. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely yeah. nothing. We would just see each other at AIS. Like, yeah, yeah. like the whole team. There yeah. was like, what, 20 girls, 20 boys at that point. Yeah, like and lining up on different floors. Yeah. Just like do the old wave. Like, yeah, hey. Exactly. Now, another thing that I remember so vividly is like you guys would line up and then you're just like, oh, yeah, okay, warm up time. Roll my wrists, <laughs> just hang out, maybe stretch my arms a little bit. And wear their like military form. Height, run birthday order and like standing perfectly. Yeah, yeah like yeah. level of yeah. best to worst, yeah. not kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember that being the most distinct differences between our trainings. We'd have yeah. like non-stop routines and you guys were, oh, do you feel like routine today? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think like... <laughs> You're right. You make it sound like we didn't train, but like <laughs> still the foot. Yeah, I think you know, I think just the the atmosphere of the training is very different. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the guys' career is probably a little bit longer as well, so we're a bit older. Um, and by then, you sort of know how to take care of your body a little bit more. Mm. Whereas you guys are kind of we're a little bit younger, and your coaches are very strict on what they expect. Yeah. Where our coaches are like, if you know what's the best for you, go to that or go to whatever that needs. So some of the guys would be very quick and on it. Some people would be. Yeah, much more relaxed in the, the way they approached the warm-up or the start of training, I guess, yeah. 100%. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, I mean, obviously that's not to say that you didn't work equally as yeah, hard yeah. because I will say men's gymnastics, you know, you do have six apparatus. It is. Yeah, I have had some, this. some people say it's harder, but... It's, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, that will leave that open yeah, yeah. to discussion. Deba uh, anyway, so, yeah, look, if we go through, I think another thing that we were sort of workshopping before we decided let's have a chat, like on camera, yep. was how our your injury uh, sort of somewhat, I guess, kicked you out of what, Olympics, did it? Yeah, so my, my big lead up, I sort of built up to the uh, Olympics and then I had... Which one? Oh, Rio was the first one. Mm. So it, uh, even before then, um, was it Tokyo? Yeah. Um, no. Um, China? London, London. 2012. London. Uh, so gymnastics is very complicated to get qualified. You've got to qualify a team or an individual and there's so much that goes into it. Uh, so after that lead in, um, we didn't make it as a team and we got one individual. Uh, so I actually had a bit of a break. I was like, oh, look, I'm mid 20s, I don't, don't know if gymnastics is going to be for me. So I essentially retired for a few months mm. um, and then was like, you know what, like I've still got the drive, still got the urge. Um, I wasn't doing like anything else that was like at fulfilling that sort of role. So then Commies was back uh, home. So I was like, All right, I'm going to build it, build up for that. Like it'd be really exciting um, and try and make obviously the next sort of cycle. Mm. So built up from there and then like leading in the worst, the worst one for me was home commies made the team gold which is coast gold coast yep can uh, relate yeah very exciting like awesome and i had a stress fracture on my shin so i actually got it in one of the trials uh and got it scanned and they i don't know if you guys have seen the injury one of the guys where his legs just like flopping around they were worried that was going to happen essentially oh my god because the crack was halfway through the tibia are you kidding that's so, not a stress fracture surely that's like yeah, a break like, yeah so it was essentially like a crack so they're like the doctor's like look you you probably won't compete so i was like okay like sort of but then our team was also very injured as well. So oh the gosh. guy that was going to fill in for me couldn't really do floor anyway. So yeah. they're like, okay, don't do floor or vault, but you can do the other apparatus, just don't do many dismounts. Oh. So just trying to lead in for that was just like the biggest stress and just trying to get to that home games. And essentially that injury sort of retired me afterwards because my floor was my best event and I was an all-rounder. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I finished that, it was like, they're like, look, it's going to be 12 months to recover. Um, and that was kind of the, the last thing that sort of got my career. Wow. And so that was, so you finished up in 2014? Uh, that, that was the 2018 oh, one. Oh, 2018. Yeah. So I, but I finished after that Olympics, um, took the break and then built up again for 2018. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So I was, apart from that, I was pretty lucky with injuries through my career, yeah. which was good. Um, just some soft tissue stuff and some injuries around the shoulders. But I managed to get through without surgery the whole time, um, which is lucky. But yeah, that stress of if you land badly, you can break your leg is not the ideal thing for, no. a, <laughs> for a competition. Well, I think that's one thing. Like with gymnastics, it's actually not as dangerous as what it's perceived yeah. to be. Like even myself, I had – so probably my worst injury is my Achilles. Yeah. That's what I got yeah. surgery on. Yeah. And then I had like an arthroscopy, so like a small surgery on my knees – Oh, and okay, and I break my finger. Okay, as I'm saying, <laughs> but just reeling off like seven. Yeah, my minutes, bad. Seven, like seven, it's not seven. that bad. I just yeah, almost yeah, died. Yeah. No, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things, considering like out of how long was your career? Yeah, so essentially that's the other thing with gymnastics. You start so early. So like we're mm. elite elite athlete. You probably were in earlier. Like I started at elite athlete sort of training at eleven till yeah. twenty eight. So 
yeah, the, the, the length of my career, I was so lucky. Um, whereas yeah, you were okay, maybe not as lucky as me. but I would still say I was lucky yeah, because yeah. there weren't any injuries aside from my finger. The yeah. other injuries weren't like an accident. Yeah. Like they weren't something yeah, I'd done yeah, wrong. Yeah. If anything, the problem that was there at, at the time, which I think they've actually done pretty well to work on now, was overuse injuries. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, my absolutely. Achilles was, I, I distinctly remember it being sore um, before it actually snapped. Yeah, and I yeah. remember, oh, I turned Did you get the noise? Like the... When it popped? Yeah. I did. But uh, do you know, before uh, I started it, so like I had done one Floritine and yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, my Achilles really hurts. And I looked at one of the girls and I said, my Achilles hurts so much. It feels like it's going to snap. Yeah, perfect. That's Who says one, that? <laughs> oh, and then I started the next routine and yeah. I was like, oh, it really hurts. And like, yeah. you can't exactly be like, oh, yeah, um, I can't do my routine. Yeah. I'll like, just walk off, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, and that's when it snapped. So yeah. most of my injuries were actually more so overuse rather yeah. than um, it, danger. I think too, like people kind of, if you watch a gymnast train, we've got pits, we've got crash mats. We do a lot of drills to lead up for things. Mm. So especially the harder skills, like they might take months to learn because you're going through the, the progressions. Whereas people see like a double backflip and go, well, if you do one badly, you're on your head. Like you're going to break your neck and be gone. But I think if you're making the right progressions and same with most skills, uh, the environment's actually pretty safe because it's you're in, well, hopefully you're in control of your body. Whereas a lot of the sports, like your contact sports, you're going to get way more injuries because it's stuff that you can't control. Mm -hmm. It's contact. It's like, other things that are you're out of control. So you're gonna get way more injuries than gymnastics where you might get a big one every now and again if something goes wrong. But realistically, same with me, I didn't fall that often, especially in comp, I'd always fall over a soft surface and it's pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have anything that you lost like competitions, injuries, like the Achilles? Oh, yeah, Did well that was worlds that was just before that was just before 2018 Com Games. Yeah. So that was yeah. annoying because, like I said, I also did the whole retire comeback yeah, I was thing. Say you did the, yeah. yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, because 2016. Good experience. Oh, yeah. great. Because yeah. because oh, we both was your did you retire in 2016? Yeah. 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 Same. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, well, 2017 kind of. Yeah. Essentially, after that. Well, after Rio, after, after we yeah. both just missed out on yeah. Rio for so, like. Yeah. Long story short, basically you have to qualify. What you guys didn't even qualify a team. No, nah, we didn't make a team. Yeah, so they didn't make a team. We didn't make a team. They sent like one female and what one male? None. Did they even send none? Nah. Oh, oh a, the New Zealand guy. No, nah, I was a con so we didn't make a team, and then you have to qualify your individual, and that gets selected really early in the season. Um, and this is one of the things that I was just frustrated with that whole season because. I, I came second in the trial mm. and then we had nationals, which I, that was the year I won senior all round. So I won nationals, but then the Olympic games were after that. Uh, but I'd already missed out on the trial spot and we didn't actually end up making that single spot. So no all rounder went, unfortunately. So. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah. love that. Love that. <laughs> so you can understand. Yeah. Like you've Very worked. complicated process. So. It's one of the most uh, difficult things. Like you don't, nothing really actually prepares you for yeah. when you've been working your freaking butt off. And like, in gymnastics, like I don't know about you, but I was training like 32 hours a week at yeah, that time. Yeah, 28 to 32 was pretty common for most of us. Like we'd train probably 28 in gymnastics and then some other strength stuff. Yeah, so and, slightly less and people gym. say like, oh, you know, don't get your hopes up, things change, but you don't actually take that into consideration. Yeah. And I you think know? like in some way I was saying after I tired, like it's very good to have a singular goal uh, as a focus point, but when that goal's not reached by either like other circumstances you don't make it by your performance and you like most trials i think it's changed a little bit now but it was kind of one or nothing like mm. if you had a bad day or just wasn't on you've got to be perfect you you miss the spot and then same thing as the team like if you're off by a little bit and don't get the score it's like oh well there's four years of training for the goal and it's like <laughs> okay what so yeah. it's 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 pretty brutal but again the singular focus of that I think it's really good for like driving performance and motivation, but as soon as you miss that, it's tough to tough to mm. take. Yeah, and th that's a good skill. Like we obviously look at it now in hindsight. At yeah. the time, you just you don't really know how to handle that, and yeah. so yeah. that's why we both decided, well, if this, yeah. we're out. <laughs> yeah, I think too, and a lot of stuff that I think hopefully that gets a little bit better later on is that that support network around what. I guess what to do in that situation. Mm. So my last, the, the home commies in Gold Coast, we had a really good uh, full sport kind of leading into psychologists and like what after the games you're gonna feel depressed, like it's just natural, like that's super high, like you can't replicate that. And sort of at least just talking about those topics where 
beforehand or the just the gym stuff it's like you don't make the comp oh well that sucks to be you like let's train for the next one it's like yeah. well you don't realize how much that affecting is like that for the athlete you have training you're trying to build up get perfect for this point and then you either make it or don't and then you, you just drop back down again and i think like a lot more work can be done in that sort of area uh for athletes and for coaches as well because i guess we're probably expecting from the coaches, but they're probably not qualified in that anyway. So I think that support network uh, is really important for learning to deal with those. Yeah, and also probably the coaches like would deal with the same thing. Yeah, 100%, yeah. yeah. Like being a coach now, I think different sort of level, but I think, yeah, you're, you, you ride the same wave, right? Like you've got the same expectations, you're hoping for the best. And I find it way more nervous watching, like watching Tyson, like I was way more nervous than any of my comps. Like I was just like, oh my golly gosh, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, sweating, God. sweating bullets, like trying to watch him compete compared to when I was, you're in control of it, right? So it's not as nerve wracking. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You do take it back to um, how in control you are of your own body. That's, that's the beauty of an individual sport like gymnastics. Yeah. yeah. If you make a mistake, if something happens, your competition doesn't go well, what we learn really early on is well, unfortunately, that is absolutely no one else's fault yeah. but your own, yeah. which is an asset outside, like when, and we can touch on yeah. that. Yeah. But when, back to that though, when you were training, when you were learning skills, did you deal with fears much? So I was, <laughs> I was very nervous for most, uh, especially high bar. So all the harder skills, mm -hmm. I was someone that trained and had to get the skills and like almost be doing the skill like perfectly before I actually tried it. Oh my God, me yeah. too. Yeah. Whereas yeah. one of my teammates and the guys, Jaden, who I trained with, Tyson Bull's brother, he was almost the opposite. He'd just be like, oh, well, I'll try this. And I'm like, I don't know, like I'd been working on it for months, doing the drills, doing it perfectly. He would do one drill terribly and be like, oh, I don't understand the drill, I'll just try it. And I was like, <laughs> I don't understand how you can just try a skill that is so dangerous. Oh like, my gosh. Whereas I'd be, my coach would be like, you are ready to go, just try one. I'm like, oh, the drill was a little bit off that last one. So, yeah. No, okay, I can relate. I was the exact same as that. Yeah. There were obviously girls that would just chuck stuff. Yeah, just chuck I it, I yeah. don't understand. They would like learn from just fall, 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 yeah. do it again, do it again. Me, on the other hand, nope, I needed to do absolutely the, every single yeah. basic fundamental to get there. Yeah, I was exactly the same. Exactly I remember the same. standing um, I, on, the, on the bar, no, not standing, but learning to cut chef and I was doing it with um, a bungee actually Yeah, yeah, yeah when that was still a thing. Just, yeah. I don't know if that's still a learning yeah, mechanism. Anyway. Not as much, yeah. Basically, you know, you like giant around the bar, let go at the top, flip, yeah, whatever. Try go to Google it, it yeah. to cut chef. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so I was doing it with a bungee and I'd like be on there and I'd literally be on there for like, I, I reckon a good 15 seconds. And so, my coach would be there like, Emma, can you please yeah. go? And come go. So my first nationals, so this is when I got jumped up. I was coming last in a recomp. Everything was pretty good apart from high bar. I was I had to do a giant and giant and then a dismount, let go in the bar. And in training, always over the pit, coach would help. I got to nationals and you got a, in a group, like a 10 minute warm up. I froze on top of the bar and just started crying. <laughs> and my coach was like, we've got 10 minutes. Like it was probably halfway through. You've got to go, like just go. Like we're in the middle of the comp. You're taking everyone's time up. And I'm just like on the bar ready to cast crying. I think I took three minutes and I didn't let go. I just went giant, giant, and then just fell. And my coach is like, that took up everyone's warm up, like in the whole group, because you're too scared to do a layout. And I was like, yeah, well. I really, I really shouldn't laugh, but I'm the same. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. I remember my coach, I hated dismount so much. Yeah, high bar dismount. If you, if you watch what a men's high bar dismount's meant to look like, it's got this big tap. I didn't do a tap. I just swung and then just let go and hoped. I landed actually pretty consistently in honesty, like if you watch, there's a video of me on High Bar Worlds, landed okay, but it's not what it should be at all. <laughs> I yeah. will never forget one time, it was like a Friday at training, and my coach said to me, you're gonna have double back off the bar yeah. tomorrow. And I was like, oh my God, that was my worst I think, nightmare. I think my throat's getting sore. Too. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so the next day I wake up and I'm like, mom, like, I'm really sick, I can't go to training. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and she, goes, she goes, oh, like, are you sure? Like, how am I yeah. gonna tell your coach? How am I gonna tell Ping? Yeah. And I was like, no, I actually just can't go in. Like, I'm faking being the most sick yeah, I've yeah. ever been in my whole life. That's fantastic. Anyway, I miss training and Ping, my coach, calls my mum. Yeah. And she goes, I know why Emma's not here. And <laughs> I, I was like, I was, yeah. like what you, I was like, oh, my God, what do you mean? I had to go to the gym. Oh, my God. And I yeah. sat on the beam. I'll never forget. I'm sitting on the low beam and she's talking to me and she goes, you're not leaving training today until you do a double back. You're like, and I was like, great. I'm going to be here for ages. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, albeit once I did it, like, yeah. you're done. Yeah. Yeah. But I reckon, I don't know about you, but the first one I can always do. 
Yeah. Because you just go. Yeah. The second one well, is think about it, yeah. the hardest. It's like, oh my God, I did it really well last time. What if I die this time? Yeah. Or like you don't, I always have to do like some skills on P-bar, high bar. That were probably the main two that I could only do in a routine. So my coach would be like, all right, we're doing stutzes. Let's get five stutzes. I'm like, I can't do five. It's like, what do you mean? He goes, I can't, I can't just do a stutz. I've got to do it from a sequence because otherwise I'm too scared. Like I don't, I don't want to do just one. Like it's too, and he's like, I don't understand. He goes, like, in the routine, like, I've never missed a stutz. Like, I'll always do it, but just to work on it, nah, can't do it. <laughs> so, he'd be like, I don't understand. Like, you, you need to do at least three of them. I'm like, well, that's three routines. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I had that too. Like, for some reason, I didn't like doing releases by themselves on yeah, bars. Yeah. Like, a Jaeger, um, like, I, for some reason, I just didn't like it. And I'll never forget being away at Worlds and I didn't have my coach there. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Mihai, our national coach at the time, was like, okay, you've got, like, three first halves and three second halves. And my second half starts with just my Jaeger. Yeah, yeah. And so just to start from it, oh, my, I was so, <laughs> I was so nervous. And yeah. I think, you know, I, I was, like, 23 yeah, and I'd been yeah, yeah. doing this skill for, I reckon, seven years. Yeah. No. Nah. Have no way. You just got those little things yeah. where you just... Yeah, all those weird... Like, same as dismount. I couldn't just cast and then giant. Like, when most people like, I, would, I had to go reverse giant pivot because that was the same lead up <laughs> and the same timing. Otherwise, I was like, I'd cast and be like, oh, no, I'm not ready yet. I'm like, still had two giants to do, but I'd cast and be like, nah, 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 nah. So, <laughs> all those weird little things have been like, this has to fit into place. Yeah. For no reason, just because you thought it had to, so yeah. Yeah, I, you know what? That's really funny. I was actually, I was speaking to my like sports psych about it and, and we were talking about how the, we had little things when yeah. we were training. My so little things, things um, I actually do weird OCD things yeah. now, yeah. but when I was training or competing, everything around the balance beam had to be exactly straight. Yeah. Like yeah. one time I went to a competition and the board, because I used to like start my mount off a board, and the coach like pulled, because it wasn't my coach. Yeah. Someone course. pulled the board back crooked yeah. And I could just see it out the peripheral <laughs> vision and I fell off. Yeah, of course. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> completely in the my world head. world sideways, like, yeah. But that was the most powerful thing. It didn't matter how many times I had done that skill. Yeah. I'm like, the board is crooked. Oh, that's a sign. Yeah. I'm off. Yeah, I had the, like, in training, I could only dismount one side of the high bar. I could, I had to set up facing the other way. So if you had, like, different routines or, like, people going, so I'd be like, oh, no, nah, i got to wait till I can go that direction. Like, on floor, like, I could not. Any tumbling pass, like it shouldn't matter. They're all the, the floors are square, right? But I had to do the same pass every direction. So if there's someone warming up in the corner and the coach is like, "Ah, oh, you got to do this," I'll be like, "Guys, you got to move." Like I can't, <laughs> I can't do my skill the other way. <laughs> Not that it matters. I'm the same. Yeah. I had to do my double pike. Like when I would warm up for my floor routine, I had to do it in the same direction as yeah. what it was in my floor yeah, routine. Exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> I could like could not. So I'm like, I have to dismount. So be like, well, I have to go this way. Like, no, nah, I just go like there's mats there. Like, well, my dismount goes that way. It's like. Does it change? Like the skill is not any different. The floor is the same. Nah, it has to be the same direction. And then you go to comp and you'd, I'd visualize like, okay, if this was my gym, that's like the place on the floor. Like that's the lockers or that way is like where the bathroom is. And I'd have to face the same way. Yes. Even oh my though gosh. you're in a completely different gym. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, this is where the lockers are and everything's around. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Like I can't even tell you how much I was the exact same. That's like, um, for some reason, one time our coach went through this phase where it was like, let's do a beam routine on every single beam. Yeah. So you go like one beam routine on the front one, then the second one, third, fourth. No, and for some reason, I just crazy. absolutely hated the third beam. Like it was yeah. just not a vibe, not bouncy. <laughs> like some bad juju or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And so every time I'd get to do the exact same routine that yeah. I've been doing for probably like now five years. Yeah. And I just couldn't do it. Yeah. It was just the weirdest <laughs> it's just thing. Like not possible. Just at so least, dumb. I think too, like then... In your mind, you can kind of blame it on that though. Like, so, you know what I mean? So if like, if I had to, I don't know, try something the wrong way, I'd be like, I can do it wrong. I'd be like, oh, well, it's only because like, even if the skill was terrible, like way the different technique, I'd be like, oh, it's just because I had to face the wrong way. And I, it was like, also like works the other way as well, where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. It's just, I had to go the other way. Otherwise I would have landed it perfectly. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. not really, it's just terrible. <laughs> like you just, you just did a bad dismount. So. Oh my God, 100%, like just that one way of taking accountability yeah. off yeah, yourself. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. You know what I used to do? I, you know what I used to do so that I could take accountability off myself, in particular if I was tired or I was doing like a new skill? I'd say to my coach, this one might be a bad one. Yeah, or like we always had like uh, like a safety check. So the first the first warm up, I'd just say to the coach, I oh, don't watch this one, it's a safety check. And like, not that you purposely do it bad, but you just like, it doesn't matter what the technique's like, just like get it round. It's like, yeah, this is a safety check, don't watch it. And you do one like terribly, but in your mind it was like, that one doesn't count. Like, even if I nearly land on my head, it's like, 
doesn't matter. Like the next one will be fine. Whereas if you're trying to do it after that safety check, then it's like, if it's wrong, then I'll start getting frustrated. But I had that one in the bank going like, oh, this one could be terrible because I'm just testing that it's safe. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, yeah. yeah as soon as I'd be like, oh, don't watch this one. Like, it might not be very good. Yeah. Like, I I'd be thinking in my head. I'll never forget thinking in my head, oh, no, you'll be fine. Yeah. But yeah. Just, just in case, yeah, right? Just, yeah, I've, I've prepared give, you. Give that expectation yeah. of like, I'm gonna might have a bad one. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I remember telling that to my sports psych when I first started working with him. And he was like, Oh, you cannot be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was really like also in comps or different gyms. I would do like a, <laughs> for the dismount service, I'd do a standing back purposely to my stomach or to my face just to see like if I crash, like how hard's the landing. And all of my teammates are like, what are you doing? So I'd do a standing back and literally land like on my face and be like, no, that's, that's fine. Or if it wasn't, or if it hurt, I'd be like, well, it's not safe now. Like I've got to move the mats. So like in comp, you just like jump and like face cam, like that's good. <laughs> Like, I did my coach not is do like, that. You're going to practice that and you're going to land like that after a dismount once. I'm like, nah, it's just like just testing it. So. Did you ever? Nah, nah. Yeah, that's nah. the thing. You just know. Yeah. It's like just, just your way of just copping in case, out. you know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We're actually very cautious people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm well, very cautious, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I am too. I yeah. was a very cautious gymnast. Yes, you're right. Some people are not. Yeah, I was like going back to like, yeah, just some of the stuff that Jaden or some of the other guys can do. I'm just like, I all like nearly... <laughs> nearly land on the bar or nearly like seriously injure themselves like that was close yeah mate close to what like <laughs> close to close to catching or close to dying or i'd do a bad one i'd be like okay like that was like for a release or something on high i'd be like okay that was a little bit close to the bar let's do some drills he'd be like that was close let's go again i'm like <laughs> aren't you scared like you or or land on the bar and then just be like oh let's do another one i'll be like okay i land on the bar obviously something went really wrong let's try to fix that now nah, let's go again i'm like oh very different yeah. <laughs> so different yeah my style was definitely i don't know about you but like we did heaps of numbers yeah you so guys like done more, yeah sure. 10 and well not that many like as i got older maybe like 10 flip flip layouts for example on beam yep. and uh, the more i would do the more i would start to worry like when is this gonna yeah, go bad yeah 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 Wait, same as on floor be like oh, you gotta do like stick three or whatever get three passes on your feet um like and when you get to like the third pass and be like, I haven't fallen any yet. I'd be like, maybe just do two of this pass. He's like, why? It's like, oh, they're going pretty well. Like, I don't, he's like, that means it should be easy to do another one. Yeah. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Like, there's going to be a bad one somewhere. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't, don't do too many. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, like, I know I worked with my, um, like, sports psych on that. And when I got older though, so like, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know how to handle that then. Did you, I don't know. Did you have any mechanisms or coping mechanisms that you came up with to deal with those types of wacky thoughts? Not really. I think I just like just kept them weird. Like in my mind, I just talk myself in or out of things that I needed to do. Mm. Like and just make those adjustments. Be like, okay, like in my warm up, I might land on my face, like in doing a double twist, land on my side, and be like, that's all right because I need to do this. And it's like my coach be like, oh, let's get another one so you get to your feet. I'm like, no, 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 I don't don't need to do another one because of this. And the coach's like, what? Or like the other way around where they'd be okay, um, but I really wanted to stick one. So then I'd be doing like in warm up like too many numbers. And that's when you got to like, I guess, trust your coach and have that back and forth. Yeah. Um, or your teammates to be like, okay, where do you think I'm at? Um, which is a learning thing. So the older I got, I got much more like confident that didn't have to warm up as much and just be like, just kind of feel it out. Whereas when I'm younger, it's like, I had to do every skill before I was ready, thought I was ready. It's like, why do I like, your body knows how to do the skills, get what you need and then move on. So yeah, I probably did like way too much warm up when I was younger. Yeah, no, I was definitely the same. But I feel like when I was younger, I trusted, like blindly trusted my coach. Yeah. Like if she said, yeah, you're ready or you can do this or do another one, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then when I got older, then it's like, I'm having a conversation in my head that's counteracting yeah. everything that you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think especially we had a few different coaches and stuff. So some of the other coaches, like I'd really trust and other ones, they'd be like, yeah, you're fine. I'm like, do you even watch? Like, I don't know if you even saw what I just did. Like, are you sure? Like, yeah, no, nah, you'll be fine. Like, uh, I'll do another one just in case. So, mm. um, just sort of like, and it's not that they're any different. I think it's just who you trust or like what you're personally, I guess, happy to sort of agree with. So. Yeah, definitely. Especially being like cautious, I find. You know, yeah. It's sort of just yeah. your way of getting like a, a second opinion that you're like, yeah, okay, that validates yeah, yeah, how I yeah, feel. Yeah, ready to go. Yeah. Um, no, that's so – it's just so funny how we have these little things. I did not know that about you because when we were training or competing, well, obviously I was up in my own world so yeah. much, but yeah. I don't think I ever saw you 
do anything that I would ever think like, oh, he's nervous of that skill. Yeah, and especially because same like even some of the other boys in the other states, like you don't you don't see them enough, or especially even though we're training so much in the same time, you're so in your own. I guess headspace and own sort of awareness and only like a few other people maybe in your training group you don't really notice those things but then you'd start to like you might might see one or two things like and some things i didn't notice like i used to always start floor and like have one arm like essentially i don't know if it was like because i was worried about getting like sweaty or something like one arm would be doing this like chicken wing thing so we stand there just like doing these and people like what are you doing <laughs> i'm like what do you mean like you just like moving around I, I didn't even realize that but that, like they would vision they would see it or some of the other guys you'd see some different things and just like what or, yeah. and stuff that they might not even realize they're doing but that's just like their I guess their tell so yeah I used yeah. to do that like before beam all the time especially it actually got worse as I got older and I'd have these little things where um I started doing this with my hands because yeah. that's how I place my hands and they my flips yeah. so I'd stand there and while I'm waiting for the judges to hurry up and get ready I'd be like oh okay like come on like this and the more I did it, the more I had to do it. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. I then went to a comp, for example, and the ju like coach I judges are ready yeah. straight away, I'd be like, oh, quick, yeah. and then present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have stuff with P bars, like have to do the chalk and the honey and all the stuff in the in the right order. And normally you get like a in the big comps you get a countdown on it. So I'd be like, mercy on up, and then like if the countdown started too early, I'd just like panic and just be like, oh my gosh, and then just feel like so underprepared and it's just like just things that probably don't matter but you're just so used to having that i guess routine or stuff you just do when you don't realize but that's such a part of your psych i guess yeah like I nadal like the tennis player like does his water bottles facing each other matter to how he plays tennis no, no. but he does it every time you oh. know what i mean so yeah me yeah. too i'll never forget walking up um actually it was worlds 2014 yeah and um good competition again everything being straight we're, it's, we're up for beam yeah and so we sort of like march out together we're walking around to the beams and you place your bag and your shoes and your trackies like yeah. all on the seat yeah and so i've placed them and we had to run up because we're sort of like running out of time yeah like competitions are fast paced honestly yeah really quick so I like put my shoes down. One of my shoes was just slightly out, like yeah. to the right a little bit. And I was like, oh, well, I can't, I can't have that. <laughs> yeah, and so cool. I'm there like fiddling with my shoes. And like my teammate, George Rosa said to me, Emma, hurry up. And I'm like, okay. And I quickly like put them perfectly together. I'm like, okay, I'm ready, yeah, ready. Yeah. And you know what? I made first reserve for beam finals. So Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's funny. Really, And it is really interesting seeing how different people, like some people you, you don't really notice things. They might have stuff. They might just be visualizing stuff. But yeah, some people would like walk their routine out like before like standing up and be like like a lot of guys on the high bar do the hand movements like all right like, yes. that's that's what i'm trying to do and it's like that's that's not helping you vision like you're just visualizing and using your hand like it's not super important but for that person it is yeah so all those things are really interesting to sort of see um yeah what do you take okay because you know what i noticed because when as soon as i became aware of doing that in gym i started noticing that i still do those things like i haven't yeah. trained now for i don't know like almost three years yeah I when I ride my motorbike I have to put my right glove on first yeah yeah, yeah. um I still keep things around my house straight yeah yeah like yeah. if I see a painting that's like oh don't it's look like, at it <laughs> I think too like and once I become saying if I become aware of something like if if like the mats is crooked or something like that like you ha I have to fix it even if it's not like not in my turn like I have to fix that so same in my house like I, if, as soon as I notice something it's like I can't just like let it go yeah or like I think, oh, there's a door open, it's fine. I, I could walk and go, like, so it has to be done, like, right away. I just can't let these random, like, loose ends anywhere. Yeah, it's, like, uh, almost like a way to optimise performance. I don't know. I Yeah. It was a yeah. way to make sure that my performance was going to be on point. Yeah. And so yeah. I guess, you know, if I'm doing something now that's, like, risky or whatever, like, for, like riding a motorbike, it's like, yeah. I want to optimise yeah. Yeah, my sure performance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's probably, there's probably more that, like, you don't even realise. Like, I Definitely. know. Definitely. I'd cycle, like cycling, I do things like in the same, same water, but it's just, to me, that's just how I do it. But if I did, I could not do it the other way. Like, or every time it's going to be that same thing. So <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting. Like, it, it is funny. It is funny. Even like um, at now, while well, I'm training Kung Fu, right? Yeah. Which we make fun of all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next black belt. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> you have to obviously be able to do things on both sides. Yeah. In gym, I was like, I twisted left. I used my left leg more. Yeah. But then my right hand, like. I think it's really interesting you say, because now coaching kind of adults, a lot of stuff we get asked is like, oh, do you, do you use both legs in your handstand? Mm. I'm like, my whole career, I ran it off the same way, like, and handstand pivoted the same way because of how technical the skills are. And you don't have time to perfect both directions. And you, there's, 
no need. Like you're not going to twist both ways in a routine on floor. So it's always just that one side. But yeah, adults are always like, well, then it's uneven. I'm like, oh, I guess so. But the mm. skill like a cartwheel or a off, it's so technical. Like I can't imagine a routine just deciding to go the other way. Like it's not something that would ever happen. Absolutely not. I remember hearing of this guy that used to warm up like, did you ever hear of this guy? They used to warm up like four or five tumbles that were completely not in his routine. Yeah, that's that's insane to me. I like, didn't know if my coach was pulling my leg with that. It's possible. We, we saw a lot of guys doing just heaps of re the code kind of changed. So Hippolito, who's a really famous Brazilian guy, mm -hmm. he used to warm up these like crazy passes that were just like essentially just bouncing the, almost the whole time. I know he did like eight layout back full twists like on the floor, <laughs> which is like a really hard, not going to be plausible in a routine. And I'm like, I don't know if he was just like showing off, but like every, there's like four comps that I went to and he'd just warm up like whip full, whip full, whip full, whip full. Like that was like one of his warm up passes. He doesn't even do like a whip in the routine. So like, I don't know why he warmed that up, but I guess maybe it's just like how he felt like he could get like rebounds. Yeah, so, yeah getting strange. springy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so if we go on to, because you talk about adult gymnastics a lot, what, firstly, when did you actually retire? So 2018? Yeah, end of 2018. So okay. I had I had the stretch fracture, the commies, and then sort of debated. So they said it would probably take 12 months to be able to tumble, because obviously tumbling's quite hard uh, for the leg. And then I... I Sort of was training a little bit, but my heart wasn't in it. And obviously becoming a bit more of a senior athlete and getting a bit older, I wanted to pursue other things. So to wait 12 months for potentially coming back, but still then it might still have lots of shin splint issues. And it's like, it was just too hard for me. So yeah, by, I think commies was kind of middle of the year. By the mm. end of 2018, I decided to retire. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Yeah. That's when I had my little other retirement break yeah. and then I decided oh I'm going to come back for come 2020 back, Tokyo yeah. and then I COVID Ooh. Yeah. anyway fantastic but um so when you first left the sport because probably in 2016 you're a bit like I hate it yeah when you finished it in 2018 because of injury were you what was your status love hate uh I think probably just the, the I still I had the respect so 2016 I, I guess Pretty much like you said, I kind of quit in anger, I guess, of things that happened or things that didn't go my way or politics of the sport. And uh, that's, I think, another reason why you probably come back because you, you're not retiring off your own sort of will. You've still got other, other goals. Um, obviously, the, the injury was kind of a bit frustrating a way to go out, but I might have retired anyway um, if that being that home commies and then the next lead up was pretty pretty long. Um, so I think I, I retired with respect for the sport. Um Frustrated that things uh, support-wise or some other small details could have uh, been better. Um, but again, that's due to a lot of factors like where we are. We're obviously very far away from the other big countries in gymnastics and the support network, the financial aspect of gym. Um, but I, for a sport, I, I, I finished with a lot of respect. Yeah, that's good. I suppose yeah. that's why you now work in gymnastics. Because I was going to yeah. say, like, I find sometimes, I don't know about you, but definitely for me, I agree. In 2016, I retired yeah. with the, I hate the sport. Yeah. In 2018, yeah. I retired because I was like, oh, well, I just got injured. Like, this is yeah. pointless. Yeah. I make no money. Yeah, you kind of. Time for me to pursue other things. Yeah, you're almost, not forced, but you're almost like, my time has come where it's not a plausible option. Yeah, and, and there's such a, I mean, gymnastics is a really physically demanding sport where also, yeah. though, you don't have time for yeah. anything else. As an adult to dedicate, and what I say to a lot of the, the clients here, they're like, oh, is that early to retire? I'm like, well, it, it depends on your situation funding wise. Like if you're, some countries have much better funding than Australia, but if I was getting uh, an MBA salary of $2 million to train, well, then you have the ability to recover, not work, dedicate everything to gymnastics outside those 32 hours a I week. I would still train. Yeah, exactly right. If I was a professional athlete getting that salary, it's, it's possible, but to dedicate 32 hours a week and try to be financially stable and get the time to recover and work. It's just, it's not plausible. And then as you're older, you do risk more injury. If you can't get the right recovery and you're, you're stressed about work and you're stressed about all these other things, your performance is going to go down. You're still dedicating that amount of time. So you start to drop down in all aspects of mm. your life. So yeah. it, it is quite tough. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when you retired the second time, I will, yeah, like I go through this sometimes. I think I'm well and truly out of it now, but I'd be like, maybe I could just go back. Yeah. Like it's almost yeah. like it's my comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it's, it's, a, it's a who, I guess for me, it was who I, who I was for so long. Like I was, I was the gymnast, right? Mm. Like I was a gymnast that was all my sort of 
every decision was a base around that, like with gymnastics in mind, whereas now much more freedom. I think just having that, like I felt so welcomed and I guess that was who I was and it was such a community base that it was really easy, right? You just feel like you fit in perfectly, um, which when you go out of there's endless opportunity for people to be doing other things. So you don't feel like you've got that close knit goal and singular mindset. So it is, it is quite different. Yeah, it's quite a shift. I know. Um, it's massive, yeah. It, it's just a whole identity thing. Even for me, yeah. I thought that I was set up pretty well because yeah. in like obviously I trained in Sydney, you trained in Melbourne. Yeah. When I lived here in Melbourne, the year after we met, thank God we met actually because yeah. then I, then we I had friends. Yeah. Um, Lona stuck in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I moved here and trained here, my whole life became gymnastics and I was like, this yeah. isn't for me, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Went back to Sydney and I thought that because when I was in the gym, I was by myself. And when I went out of the gym, I was not a, like, you know, yeah, not training yeah. and I wasn't around gym people, I would be fine. But what I didn't realize and what I cottoned on to maybe a year ago or something was that actually because I was the only one, when I went to school or when I went to see my friends, I was known as the gymnast. Yeah. yeah and when I yeah. no longer had gym, it was like, well, what am I now? Yeah. What are you, and at, when you get later in your career, everyone's like, oh, what are you going to do after gym? It's like, well, at the at the time, you're still 100% committed to that. So, like, you don't really, you don't really want to be thinking of, I guess, your other life or that. And then as soon as that goes, it's like, okay, well, everyone's like, well, now what are you doing? It's like, well, I'm figuring out, like, you know what I mean? And that, that kind of delayed working out where you kind of fit into a normal society now. And I, it's a lot of it, like, when a lot of the elite athletes kind of speak about that as well. Like, you're, to all your friends and your outside gymnasts, you are that elite athlete achieving these amazing things. And then when that's gone, everyone's like, well, now what are you doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> And especially for a sport like gym where if you say to someone, oh, yeah, like, I was an elite gymnast and they're like, oh, cool. Yeah. And no one knows how much yeah. that yeah. actually shaped, A, who we are as a person and, yeah. B, how much work that was and for how long. Yeah, I think because even compared to most sports, I don't know in details every sport, but uh, talking to a lot of other people that have achieved great things in sport, that commitment from such an early age. So essentially for most gymnasts, they would have started around that three to six year old starting mm -hmm. the sport and then committed really early from even seven years old, like such big hours. And then that's your whole life from that age. Like you're doing 24 hours a week up to 32, 36 hours from seven to eight years old. That's all your development, right? Like from seven to 20s, that's your whole development and whole of all what you know. Um, whereas a lot of sometimes other sports, they might not get to that massive amount of hours a little bit later in their teens and they've sort of all really developed past that. So, yeah, that commitment's massive. Yeah, definitely. So why on earth are you working now with gymnastics? I think uh, I went through a point, as I said, in 20, where I did, wanted nothing to do with it. Um, so I was like, nah, like it's, I had my time. I don't want to work with gymnastics. But I think in end of 2018, the respect I had for gym and what it means as a general sort of sporting or fitness space, you've got strength, flexibility, body awareness, and like that coordination factor. I think for most sports as a foundation or for kids, that foundation is is amazing. And a lot of the clients that I get or still to see is like, I wish I did gymnastics more when I was younger because what it involves is, is, is everything. And I think a lot of either other fitness regimes or other sports might miss out on one sort of aspect quite a lot. Um, gymnastics kind of encapsulates everything as being an athlete in fitness. So I think like, to have something that most people don't know or most people wish they do just to, to share that and sort of teach others, I think is massive or really important. Yeah, I think it's similar to how I felt like I went through the whole, I never want to do gymnastics. Yeah. I am not putting it, my yeah. children in gymnastics. It yeah. is the worst thing in the whole entire world and I hate it so much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was in my, I'm missing out on going to parties like yeah. on Saturday nights. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like my friends have this whole- um, It's a completely different life, isn't it? When you're 18, 19, your friends mm. are just, going out drinking every night and you're like, training at seven, yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally, I just remember sort of like going from a competition to a party, yeah. you know, with my hair yeah. in a slick bun. Yeah, like, yeah. That's not hot, anyway. It's perfect, it's perfect. <laughs> um, Which you obviously realise now, you're like, oh, it doesn't matter and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Yeah. Um, but I, I went through similar where I went through that phase, yep, hated it. Then now I'm like, okay, well, that's actually a skill set that I have. Why not capitalise on that? Yeah. Yeah, and just the experience of like that commitment and what it requires uh, for such a long period of time to be a elite gymnast, um, I think is massive for anything in life. Like you gotta think to that dedication, that amount of hours, that hard work, if you can put 80% of that effort into anything else in life, uh, not many other people can do that. Um, so just even just 
sharing that experience, I think it has lots of value. Yeah. What do you think made you realize the skill set that you got from sport? Because you know how, I don't know about you, but I've got, I see both sides. I've got a lot of people in my life that see the great side, what you gain out of it, the skill set, the mentality that you kind of, you have a not like a leg up, but you yeah. have this awareness around what you're capable of. And then I've got a yeah. lot of other people that in my life that are like, no, it was the worst time of my life. Like I don't have yeah. anything. I'm starting from the bottom. Yeah. I think it is easy to look at it from both ways. I can definitely see if you've dedicated your whole life, and especially for us, like I retired at like 28 and some of the other guys are retiring around that age group and you, you, you kind of feel like you're thrown into the world with like some people have only just finished uni because they've done it part-time or some people haven't done uni and they're just kind of starting and looking for work and you're a 28-year-old with zero work experience. Like it, it is very hard and I think, as I said before, I think a lot of elite sports that aren't your professional sports probably have that problem of coming to this world and going well some of my friends have already got houses or kids and I have five grand to my name <laughs> amazing <laughs> amazing amazing experiences and all this life stuff but that doesn't help you progress to the next phase of life um, but yeah and the flip side is that if you can still use that same drive and same sort of mentality as you had in gym if you can move that into whatever it is it doesn't have to be anything to the sport um, you, you're going to progress much faster than someone that's not as motivated or doesn't have that skill set and that drive. And I think you can, even in normal life, you can see people that achieve great things and they, it, just, it takes a kind of person, I guess. Yeah, I totally agree. You get you gain like such a skill set out of it. Like even when yeah. we're sharing about, um, you know, the wacky things that we did, a lot of them come down to our ability to be able to, A, like you refer to, like control, like yeah. take back control, yeah. understand how our body works, be in like in a tune with yeah. that, I suppose you could say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so that's really cool. And I reckon because obviously with peak, you guys coach adults, gymnastics yeah. predominantly and yes, correct, gymnastics yeah. strength. Yep. I think that's great. And just seeing the community base that comes in here and they love it so much. Yeah, um, we've got an I think, amazing group of people here. Yeah, you've yeah. kind of just built from, you know, what you've recognized as, okay, this is what I've got as a skill set. You've just been like, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And yeah. I think that's, like, I think that's great. I think too, like we're, we've tried to take uh, the good aspects of gymnastics and sort of transfer most of those across without being uh, super crazy competitive or and that sort of aspect. And I think that's probably where gymnastics might be a little bit better now, but really struggled when I was there. It was either you're training for the Olympics, failing or succeeding at that or nothing. Mm. Um, and there's so many other great aspects of gymnastics that is good for everyday life, good for everyday sport. And like people can benefit from that from all ages, right? Like well, I've got PTs and clients in their 60s, 70s that are learning handstand, they're learning their range of motion because you're, it's your body, right? Like you can, you can do amazing things at any age. You're not adding load to it. And I think trying to take the good parts of gymnastics without maybe the the more demanding stuff, uh, I think is, I think is great for everyone. Yeah. So looking back, did you ever think about, I don't know, finishing sport? Like when you were doing gym, did you ever even consider what am I going to do when I finish? Yeah, I think as soon as you get sort of past that in your 20s and you see other people, I guess it's the, the social expectation, right? Like you see your other friends that aren't in sport, either finishing uni and starting jobs and getting money to go travel and you're like, I don't know if I've got, Money for the fuel in my car this week. Uh, I think you, you do start to question that, do right? You no, know, one time <laughs> I was talking to this guy um, who like plays tennis, and he'd just come back from I don't know the US Open or something yeah, like that. So, something, something, really something weird. amazing. Yeah. And um, he, I said to him, "Oh yeah, I won World Cup, like I'm World Cup gold medalist." And he's like, "Oh, like amazing! How much money did you make?" Yeah. And I was like, "Uh, twelve hundred Swiss francs." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, "What?" Yeah, I think like. <laughs> He was worth like 150k. Yeah, yeah. And, they're, and they're like, and no one that's like ranked 400. It's like, it's it's uh, it's really hard looking at, as I said, the, everything's like this in life anyway. But if you look at like your, nowadays your AFL in Australia or your NBA players, like if you, just a base player that sits on the bench, you're making in the millions of dollars per mm. year. And you're in your country, in your sport, you're not even in that sort of fine tune amount. Like you won a World Cup, place like in finals and you're not getting any financial reward for that. So that's not why people do sport, but it, it plays a massive part in setting up the next phase of your life or the longevity of it. Like if, as you said before, if, if I was making 100K plus to do gym, A, I'd do it way longer. B, 
the later stage in your career, you're going to be able to dedicate more time and more recovery. You're probably going to get more results and you're going to set yourself up for life. Like if you just make smart investments, you can start your business while you're training with that amount of money. Mm. Right now it's like you've got to start from scratch and you just got to use those things that you have, the motivation and work ethic to get somewhere. And a lot of people find it really hard. If you do struggle when you retire and you don't feel like you can fit in, you, you can't use those those attributes. It is it is a tough tough few years after you finish the sport. Yeah, but you are right. You know, I think it I think it can be whatever you decide to look at it. Yeah. Um. And yeah. I, you know, quite similar to you, decided okay, I've got this awesome skill set. This yeah. is where I've obviously got the strength. A beauty of gymnastics is that community base. Like, yeah. for example, I moved back to Sydney after 2015. You retired in 2018. What are we now? 2023, yeah. Yeah, 2023. and we're still hanging after out. Yeah. <laughs> And like you got, and a lot of people like don't have that, like you either finish school or you finish sport, you don't have that community. Like we train with people, I saw like my friends more than I saw like my family. So I think no matter how far away, like away or what they're doing, like you've, you know each other so well and that community is amazing. Even the community here, like they don't, they don't have years of experience, but I think something about gymnastics and the, the difficulty of it, I think, uh, just really brings people together. Yeah, well, even, you know, at what we were saying when you had those times in training where it's, like, scary. Yeah. You're going into training and a lot of the times I would go into training because I've got friends there. Yeah. It made it a yeah. little bit harder when I didn't or when yeah. I was a little bit, a bit older, older, like yeah. maybe 16, 17, everyone starts, like, quitting because it gets too hard. Yeah. But, you know, even around those times, then when I would go to national camps or something like that, and you're really scared of a skill or um, you're at a competition and you're not feeling the best and you would have your friends there cheering you on, like either yelling and supporting yeah. you or saying to you when you're back home, like, you've got this, like, don't worry. And that's sort of just like a bond that you keep forever. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, as you said, like, you're, everyone knows sort of the how hard or not risky is the wrong way because you're training enough to not make it risky, but just the... So you have to be on such a high level to do these skills and everyone can appreciate that and get around you. So I think the support in your team and your training is massive and same as everything for life. Like the guys that I train with, even if I haven't spoken to them for ages, like drop of a hat, we're going to be there for each other. And I think that's that's an amazing feeling just to know that in the back of your mind. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think sharing that, that growth from like most of the training group, well, 12 to mid-20s, like training 30 hours a week, going through these times where you're like I don't think I can do this and they like so they grow up with you and that supports just something you can't really replicate it's hard yeah. to hard to explain I guess yeah it's funny looking at it in hindsight because I just don't think I looked at it the same way when I did gym nah because that's just how it is right like you don't really appreciate what it is to to have that many people around you or yeah those things where you're like in your mind you think it's like life or death like all right, I'm doing a double out if I I'm probably could die here and you got your teammates like come on like that's a, like you don't really appreciate what that is at the time but then what it means later on, I think, yeah. Yeah, and I also I also feel also, you know, with that too, when you are about to do a double out and be like, this is actually terrifying. Yeah, like, yeah I don't know if I want to do this. Like, able, come on. Yeah. Like, oh. and, and just that, that sort of self-confidence, that sort of self-belief that you gain yeah. through a sport like gym where yeah. you have done all the work. The only person, like obviously your coach has told you what to do, has supported you, has, well, for me, if you're anything like me, was the reason you went into the gym yeah. on the days yeah. when you didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because you didn't want yeah, to have to like, tell them. <laughs> forced, forced into it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when you're doing those skills, the only person that you, you know, as we sort of said in the beginning, you can hold accountable for that is yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a really powerful skill for outside absolutely. elite sport. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting where, because people, obviously gymnastics is an individual sport, but you go around as a team. I think it's really interesting to sort of see the dynamic of that because in a team sport, like, some people have their bad day and then your team, like, blames that person but you can kind of get this like weird relationship between like oh it's their fault that we didn't succeed where you, know, you never have that in gymnastics like yes as a team if your one of your teammates has a bad day but you've still got such a big control of how that performance is because there's so little of you and it's individual every time you go up it's an individual performance uh i think it's it's a different mindset to i guess some other sports with a big team and a big thing where people might not get that click mm. you you kind of have to in gym you've got to such a small network of people that are able to do what you can do um that yeah, everyone normally gets around each other yeah agreed okay so before we sort of like finish up is there anything that you would probably have done differently in your gymnastics career? Oh, um, just pick one. <laughs> oh yeah, this is millions. Ah, uh, oh, it's a tough one. Uh, me personally, um, oh, man. there might not be too because I don't. I don't know if for me, there's anything necessarily that I would have done differently. There's things yeah. that I 
Like I think back on how, like let's say 2016 uh, Rio campaign. Yes. Okay. I think back now to how I was not appreciative. Like I didn't fully grasp what that opportunity was. Yeah. Like going to the Olympics, like, like, yeah, okay. Everyone wants to, when you're training that hard, you want to go to the Olympics. But I didn't really grasp that that could be something that's going to be an asset for like my future. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, probably probably what you said, I think if you had to pick one thing, it would be just kind of appreciating how amazing or the like what in that moment. Like there's definitely moments where you do step back like finishing like Worlds or finishing Com Games and just looking at a packed stadium and especially the home one where people are like cheering essentially for you and then you feel like a celebrity, like thousands of people come up to you afterwards. I think those kind of moments you do appreciate it. But during the training and it's like how – like day to day and how on you've got to be. I think you probably that's probably the one thing I wish I did a little bit more is actually appreciate like holy shit like this is this is pretty crazy. Mm. Um, and then yeah, I guess the other things are kind of not as much in my control. Like wishing that we had like the NBA lifestyle would be nice, <laughs> making two million dollars a year to train. Hey, and, maybe maybe you can yeah. work towards that so other maybe, people yeah, can. Learn. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. Hey, we could totally do that. We've got enough uh, you know self confidence yeah, yeah, yeah. to now. Hundred <laughs> percent. Get the, get the set us up. Nike, if you're listening, uh, we're ready. We're happy for sponsorship deals. All right, that's a good way to wrap up. All right, well, thank you so much for I don't know having a chat today. No worries. And, um, no doubt, hopefully in the future, if everything goes according to plan, we can do it again. Yeah, get a like a two year reunion. So I would how's love going. to do. Okay, if we do, years. if we did that, right? If we yeah. jump, let's go just basic two years in the future because yeah. I absolutely freaking hate five year plans. Because if there's anything, Too many there's anything COVID we years, have yeah. learned, it's yeah. that. Things change. Things do not go according to plan. Yeah. Okay, two years in the future. Yeah. What do you hope to have achieved or be doing or like be? Uh, I think having a community, like a massive community with Peak, doesn't have to be in this venue, but sort of like a more, I say global, but it doesn't necessarily have to be global. But a yeah, reach for the stars. Reach for it. Global. <laughs> uh, just community of like the respect and understanding of what we're doing. Um, I think people think gymnastics and they think of, girls training like little girls training or like that and I think the idea of gymnastics becoming a more global sport that can be recognized for what it is uh, I think just being kind of the leaders in that would be amazing um, that education sort of atmosphere of going this is what gymnastics is and what it can be mm-hmm. um, and then hopefully changing that for general population and for elite athletes as well going gymnastics is such a great thing and it can be such a great thing um, yeah that'd cool. be amazing I, I like that. I back that. So yeah. in two years time, we're going to check back in. Yeah, I'll be somewhere overseas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be like living together in yeah, Europe or exactly something. Yeah, exactly right. Promoting, promoting <laughs> the new, new style of gymnastics. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Wads. No worries. Always good. <laughs>